Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. This is Mount Bethel Christian Worship and Fellowship Bible Study, and I'm so glad to be here. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy that you can be here and, and just appreciate you tuning in. And you know, I just I'm not a, a minister or anything like that, and I don't have any qualifications to, to to be a minister or anything like that. I just love the Word of God, and I live by it. I really try to, every day to live by God's Word and to just hold on to His promises and his truth you know so i thought hey i'll do a blog talk radio show and and just share what god is doing in my life and just kind of share the word with anyone who wants to listen and so you know i'm glad that you can be here and as you could if you look at my other blog talk shows you can see that you know the 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 work that i do with advocating for you know prevention of child abuse it's a it's quite a it's a heavy load, and you know, for people that are out there doing it, it's it, it's quite sad, and and a lot of times, you know, it can make you it can make you kind of down, you know, and and that type of work, it's very frustrating because we're just fighting against all kinds of evil, and so, um, you know, I I find that by staying in the Word and and just really holding on to God's promises and His Word, it really helps me to get through. Uh, each day, right, and, and even with my own personal experiences, it, it just really helps me to continue to learn how to walk in love, you know, and how to how to be the hands and the feet of Jesus here on the earth, and how to um, just incorporate God's word into my life. So that's why I'm glad to do this show, and um, you know, I'm just glad you can tune in. We'll be on for half an hour. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast. I used to take callers, and then I just got so many prank calls that I got tired of taking the callers. So if you want to be on the show, you're more than welcome to. Just get a hold of me before the show. Let me know, you know, at least the first few numbers of your phone number, and that way I can I know it's you, and I can let you on the air. And because I do welcome everybody to all my shows, so I'm just so happy and so excited to be here. And I thought we'd just look at like this week, for instance. This week was just kind of just another one of those weeks that just could could bring a person down. You know, my sweetheart is terminally ill. He's uh, He was diagnosed nine years ago with uh, terminally ill uh, liver disease. And he needs, uh, you know, a transplant, right? A liver transplant. He turned one down because he didn't feel right about it. This was many years ago. And he just didn't feel right about it. Something was telling him not to take it. And so he didn't take it. And sure enough, the person who received that liver died shortly after because it had AIDS. They didn't screen it properly. So had he taken that liver, he would have been a goner. So I just feel like the Lord is just working on our behalf all the time and, um, you know, just working to to do what he said he would do. And, and we just have to hold on to to his promises and his word. So this week is this last week that it was a great week, except for the fact that he's, my sweetheart ended up in the hospital again uh, overnight, uh, off and on throughout the week. Right, he was just not doing well and he had a, a lot of complications and whatnot. But um, you know, years ago that might have bothered me to the point where I'd be so upset I couldn't even work the next day and I just wouldn't be able to carry on with my with what I needed to do. But now because I really trust God and I really put it in His hands. Um, I find that it's just I'm in such a better place than I used to be, and I just and it's all because of what God said in His Word. You know, you know, basically all throughout the Bible He says, you know, hold on to my promises. You know, my Word is truth. Keep my Word in your ears and in your eyes and in your mouth and on your lips at all times to keep evil away from you. You know, He is our protector. He's our provider. He is everything. He's our source, right? And uh, if you go back and study what the word God actually means, it means everything. Like uh, it means uh, the breasty one, uh, the the provider, the protector, just everything that a person could possibly need to survive and to live. He, that's God, and so He's so awesome. And so I'm so, so I'm so happy to be able to share His Word with whoever wants to listen. And um, so I thought we'd just talk about that like not being moved by what we see not being moved by what we hear not being moved by what happens in our lives day-to-day struggle you know and staying with god's word staying on standing on his promises and 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 just you know holding on to him and his plan and his word and i I really believe that helps people get through a lot of tough times because you know the uh the devil the enemy he's out there he's like a roaring lion he's not a roaring lion he's like one he's seeking those who he may devour so you know he's seeking those who will allow them to be used by him right so um we have to just stay diligent on the word of god and keep it first place in our hearts if we want to stay in that protection under god's wings you know and under under the protection of god 
So it's the only way we can do it. And with the name of Jesus, you know, and, and the full armor of God, the blood of Jesus, and just, you know, the anointing that, that, that comes through the Holy Spirit by being a born-again child of God, we, we have the authority to cast out the devil. We have the authority to heal the sick. We have his anointing. That's the authority. That was the blessing given to originally started out that the Lord created life he, he created us in his he created man in his own image so men and women were all created in in god's image we used to be anyway uh, perfect and he used to walk with us in the garden and you know he could walk with us because it was no sin and it, adam and eve when they were first created were pure and they were just like god right hallelujah so it just makes me so excited so um yeah so this is just way too exciting um i wanted to just yeah, we'll talk. We're just going to get into some psalms because I was looking through for you know God's like do not be moved and and what God said to us back in His psalms, um, the psalms mainly of David and like Psalm 15, Psalm 21, Psalm 46, and then we I thought we'd look at some more about God's promises um, in like First Corinthians 15 and Hebrews and stuff. So I'll, we'll go ahead and read some of this, and I'm just going to read. I'm going to read from my King James Bible, but that's just because I love it. But you can read from whatever translation you have because they're all so beautiful, right? So you just pick your favorite Bible, and you can read along with me. So I want to look at Psalm 15. We'll just start right there. And Psalm 15, it says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. And so I, I like that because if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, you know, which is which is, you know, doing what God has asked us to do, which is to keep love in our hearts and to to love Him first of all, first place, and keep Him first place, and then to love our neighbors as ourselves and help people and do the right thing, which is you know the, the righteousness, right? To do the right thing, keep God's righteousness in our hearts, right? Um, then, of course, we're not going to be moved by what we see. We're not going to, because fear is of the devil. And so, anytime you have fear, it's from the devil, because the devil, that's what happened when God gave the anointing to Adam and then to Eve, uh, and then they gave it over to the devil. It became twisted and it became fear, right? So, a lot of people do things out of fear, and fear is mainly the main cause for most of the problems on the planet. That's why people are bombing each other. That's why people are stabbing each other, killing each other, beating on each other. It's all its all about fear and control. And that's what the devil has been trying to do uh, since, what, since, you know, way back. So um, if we don't have fear and we have faith, if the fear is the opposite of faith. So by having faith and no fear, like Jesus said, fear not, believe only, you know, or only believe, right? Um you know, fear is of the devil. So if you have fear, you're, you're giving over to the devil, right? Um, we can't have any fear. I, know, I remember being, when I was born again there, about almost three years ago now, very close to three years, I remember when I was reading this, you know, in the Word and, and listening to some of the preachers talking about the, the issue of fear, I really thought about it. And I thought, yeah, I don't have any fear. Because once I had been born again, I realized that I didn't have any fear. Because I knew where I was going and I knew that the Lord was with me and I knew that um, that all my days of fear and, and, str- and struggle, really, I mean, honestly, the, the whole idea that that I could be attacked, you know, by the enemy, by Satan or whatever, just left my, my whole being. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go out and fight the good fight for the Lord. So I don't have any fear to go and do what the Lord asked me to do um, because I know that he's with me, right? And I still am working out, you know, some leftover issues from growing up in an abusive home and being abused as a child. But that's mainly just working out some psychological issues. But in my heart, like I know now, you know, I have my place in the kingdom of God. I'm a child of the Most High God. And that's really done so much healing to my to my spirit. You know what I mean? Like before, I was just a, a person who was really um, down and just not... Uh, I was hoping I was going to go to heaven, but, you know, I wasn't sure. And I was just praying that the Lord would just be with me. And I was just always, um, you know... De- just sort of depressed about the whole thing, you know, my watching my family be destroyed by Satan like that. Really, it was my parents, but 
they allowed him to, to, to get into their hearts and destroy them. And in the meantime, they destroyed their family. So, um, you know, I, I knew that I had to let all that go. And so if I was going to make it, and, and you know, as I was born again and everything, I knew right away that all that hate and anger had to come out and that the Lord, you know, and his love and his goodness and mercy, light, truth, compassion, and everything that is good, was going to have to come into my heart, right? That's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the Lord. Praise the Lord. So um, that's what happened. And so it was, you know, all that bad stuff was replaced by God's love and goodness and mercy, right? So we have to hang on to that. And we're going to still be bombarded by the enemy and by other influences in, in this world, right? Evil entities and whatnot. But that's why we have to keep love first place. Because we don't want to fall into that trap of going back to... Uh, to the way that we used to be, which is carrying a lot of hatred and, and, and ill will towards people. That's what Jesus was saying, you know. If you even have a, a bad thought about somebody, it's the same as killing them. You know what I mean? It's it's That's how serious it is. And, and every word that we say, we're going to be held accountable for. So it's such a serious issue. And I and I realized that when I started getting into the Bible, I, I used to spend about 70 hours a week in the Bible. And... Um, I did that for over a year, and I wanted to be go into ministry and, and, and be a preacher, and, and the Lord just didn't see it that way, but that's okay. But the thing is, is I was really in tune with the Word, and I thought, man, I'm going to have to do exactly as the Lord says if I want to really make, you know, to, to really allow the, the Lord to work in my life. So lately I haven't been spending as much time as I should be in the Word, but as long as we just keep Him in first place and just keep reading His Word and, and, and putting it into into use, you know, not just reading it and then putting the book down, the, the beautiful Word from God, just putting it down and then just being like, oh, well, I can go do whatever I want now because I've done my part, you know, for two minutes in the Bible, right? That's just not going to cut it. We have to actually, like, we have to live it. We have to live God's Word if we're going to, if we're really going to walk with him and we're going to allow him to walk in our lives because he he can't come around um sin he because but the whole issue being people think it's an issue where he would choose that but actually it has nothing to do with it it's just light destroys darkness so if god were to come around someone who is has darkness in their heart they would literally be destroyed and he does not want to destroy people that's why moses couldn't look upon him he said you can see my backside only because god's God's glory in, in his light is so pure in its form, right? And there's lots of talk about it in the Bible. You just got to get in there and check it out. It's pure energy, and it destroys darkness. It completely obliterates it. So um, God just can't come around because of the man fell back with Adam and Eve, right? So he can't just walk with us like he used to back in the old days with uh, Adam and Eve. So, And I'm sure he would love to. But he's walking with us now because he made a way. And that way is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus is the way. He made that way. You know what I mean? When people think, oh, you know, this is just silly stories. Well, no, it's not. God had to have a pure, sinless sacrifice to reconcile man back to him. So in other words, that we would give God our hearts, right? We would be born again, a new creature unto God. And therefore, he could walk with us like he did with Adam and Eve. But this time, he's walking through us, in us, with us. You know, we're walking by him, through him, in him, right? So we are one with God. Hallelujah to the Lord God, Jehovah, for his great plan. I'm so excited about it. And so, you know, if we fall off a little bit and we we kind of just do stupid things and, you know, like, I mean, I started smoking again. The Lord asked me specifically to quit smoking, and I did. Quit for 14 months and started again due, due to some stress, which was stupid. And, um, you know, I just have to repent and then quit again, right? Because the Lord does not want me to smoke. So that's the whole issue. But, as long, you know, if we have a bad day and we have some ill will in our heart towards somebody or we all of a sudden find ourselves, you know, yelling and screaming at people, even though we know we shouldn't be doing it, hurting people and stuff, right? We, we really have to repent about that and then really try like not try hard to not do it again because God knows that we're human. He knows our form. He made us. He created us. He knows we are weak. You know what I mean? So he knows we're going to make mistakes. And the whole issue is is that as long as we truly mean it in our heart and repent, you know, and, and just ask the Lord for forgiveness, you know, and say, Lord, you know, look, I'm sorry, I... I didn't, you know, I repent and I ask your forgiveness because I did not mean to do that. You know what I mean? And he he will forgive us our sins and he will um, help us to, to, and we have to look for that help, you know, to not do it again, right? Because I know every, it, we're human and we do make mistakes, right? So the whole idea is we can't be perfect because only God is perfect. 
but I think we're, that's what Jesus was saying. You know, none is perfect, but but be be perfect as your Father is perfect. So in other words, we have to try like really hard to to be like our Father if we want Him to to be able to work in our lives, right? Because we have to be, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to completely encompass, encompass us, incorporate us. You know what I mean? Because without Him, you know, it's just darkness, right? And so we need that light, and we need that we need the Holy Spirit. And so, in order to have the Holy Spirit in your heart, you can't have hatred and rage and, and ill will and, and and jealousy and, and contention and, and strife and all this other stuff. You just can't be there, right? And lately, things have been pushing me to um, to feel the way that I used to feel before I was born again. To have to cause me to have bad feelings in my heart towards people, especially you know because I was abused as a child. Um, I've, I've got some situations right now that are a little bit stressful. And so what I'm having to do is lean heavy on the Lord. You know what I mean? Like he said, pass up your burdens to me. That's what I'm here for. And I mean, it's like, hallelujah. You know what I mean? Because he, without him, we, we can't, we are nothing. Without him, we can't do anything, right? So with him, I can walk in love and I can learn how to love people that actually you know, abused me and actually took used me and took advantage of me. And the whole idea being is it's not for them, it's for me and it's for the Lord. Because we're all God's children and he doesn't want to lose any one of us. And he's the judge, not me. So, um, you know what I mean? He wants all of his children to come home to him, including the abusers. But the whole issue is, is I don't condone abuse. And no one should. But the thing is, is we have to pray for these people. You know what I mean? So in the meantime, if we have to bust them and get the law after them, well, we do because we had to set up laws for that very reason. But the whole thing is, is we have to also pray for them because they are definitely being held, you know, ransom, held, you know, uh, enslaved and enslaved by Satan, right? Because how could you possibly do something, these, some things that are so evil like these people do? With You know, obviously they're serving Satan. And uh, it's sad. And, you know, if they don't change their ways, they're going down to the pits of hell. They're going down to the eternal uh, dev- the eternal damnation. They're going down. They're just going to be burnt. You know what I mean? They're just going to go away. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, that's a shame because we're all going to go on to eternal life in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about that. And, I, and I'm just really looking forward to it. when the time comes. You know what I mean? Like when it's my time, I'm going to be I'm excited about it. Psalm 21. I want to take a look at that one too. Psalm 21. I love the Psalms. This is a this is a Psalm of David. Psalm 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice! Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips. Salah. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it to him, even length of days for ever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's just it. You know, he, the, God is the judge, and he will judge righteously, right? He's a, he's a true and righteous judge. He's, he's, he is truth. So, you know, you can't go to him and just try to, you know, pass off a bunch of lies and stuff to him. Like when we do finally meet our Lord, our God, our maker, uh, he's going to know what's in your heart. He's going to know what's in my heart, right? So there's no fool in him. And we might be able to fool people on this planet, but we're not going to be able to fool him. And so I have to pray for people out there who are on the wrong path and who have chosen to serve Satan instead of God. And I really do pray for them because they are in some serious trouble. We'll look at Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear through the earth be removed, although the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the 
mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, those people who are moved, so in other words, those people uh, who who don't know God's promises, don't know God's word, don't, uh, you know, just have a lot of, you know, evil in their hearts and, and, and don't trust in God and stuff like that, they will be moved and they will be destroyed. So the whole thing is, is to not pay any attention to what's going on around, really, in the world, what's going on around us. For instance, I mean, I could have gotten really down because my sweetheart was in the hospital this week, right? And, uh, you know, kind of thing, having problems and having trouble and, uh, he's back on the transplant list and stuff like that, and, and you know he's going to go for it this time, which gives him a 50-50 chance, right? But we just give it up to the Lord, so I mean that's great. But the thing is, is oh, that could have gotten me really down. But I thought, no, I'm not going to be moved by what I see. I am not going to be moved by what I hear. I'm standing on God's word. I'm standing on His promises. I will not be moved. And like even Jesus said to the apostles, you know, he said, you know, like a root, you have to be just rooted and grounded. You know what I mean? Like stuck right in there, just firmly on God's word. You know what I mean? So don't you don't want to be budged by any doubt or unbelief, right? Because that doubt and unbelief is just this just fear basically is what it is. It's like, oh no, you know, it's not gonna happen or he's not you know it's not gonna work or whatever. It's all this doubt and fear, right? Which is of the devil, right? Because if God said he's gonna do something, he's gonna do it. And so, you know, if whatever we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus and his name, you know, and we, we and as long as it's in with the will of God then it will be done. If it's not, then you have to know it's right the best plan, really, because God has the plan. Obviously, his plan is way better than my plan. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I have to give it up to him and just let him run with it because I obviously don't have the best plan, but he does. So that's the whole issue, right? And it just makes it, you know, before I was born again, I wouldn't have even read the Bible. I would have never even picked it up. I used to try, and I used to read the first few chapters of, of all the, the names and the genealogy and stuff, and I couldn't get past the names. I was like, oh, man, I'm never going to get past this. So I couldn't get into the story, but I always loved the Word of God as far as, like, all the stories in the Bible, you know, Moses and the Noah's Ark and all the famous Bible stories, right? And um, so it's just... You know, now that I'm into the Word, I see that really He's told us everything we need to know, how to um, how to have His protection, how to have His life. Basically, He's given us His life. Praise God. You know what I mean? But we have to follow what He says, and we have to follow His Word, and we have to follow uh, what His will is. Right? So, um, yeah, it's just so important to stay in the Word and actually know it and put it. Put it down, sink it down into your spirit and let it just grow in there, you know what I mean? And just let it sink in firmly. And that way we will just not be moved by what we see. We will not be moved by what we hear. We're just going to count on God's word and we're just going to say, I don't care what that looks like because what I know is that my God is all-powerful and my God is all-victorious and my God is going to provide for me. You know what I mean? So I don't care what the situation is in the world, what's going on, you know, whether it's a job loss or or an illness or whatever, you know, I just do not allow that to move me because it can that, that causes fear and then all of a sudden you're in doubt. And once you doubt, you disconnect from God because, uh, you know, you, can't, you have to be in faith. And that was the whole idea. That's the whole purpose for the Lord Jesus coming to, you know, to make sure that everybody knew, first of all, to be the sacrifice. But he also did a lot of teaching while he was there. And if we go back and look at what he was talking about with the apostles and all of his followers, and the people that were listening to him on those hills, you know, the 5,000 and the 5,000 and the 5... I mean, these people were there to listen to a good message, man, because they knew who he was. And praise God for sending his only only begotten son. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to your holy name. I'm so happy about this. But anyway, he was he had a really good message there, you know, and, and he let everybody know that we it is we have to stand in faith and we have to keep God's word first place because um, that's the only way. 
you know, it's it's just not. If we disconnect with doubt and unbelief, then God cannot work on our behalf. Because to be in doubt is to have fear. To be in fear is the opposite of faith. And God is He doesn't do it on purpose. It's just that He set all this up. And they did go through and explain that very carefully in Genesis. Like when you go back and read Genesis there, um, it was, it's all, was all set up and weighed out. So God can't go back on what he did already. He can't just change his mind. and You know what I mean? He, has, he is the truth. So what he did is done. And so he's already, you know, he is the past, he is the present, he is the future. So he, it's all been done. So he can't go back and change it, right? And so it was all set up a certain way. So there's laws and properties to dealing with God's word and God's the way that he wants us to live. And these properties were set in motion and they still are today. You know what I mean? And uh, even Albert Einstein said, you know, the, the theory of light, you know, we're traveling at whatever speed, the speed of light or whatever. He said Albert Einstein didn't even believe in God. And he said, you know, the only thing I can say it is, is it's just got to be God because there's no other explanation for it. Um, it. It's Science is really, the Bible proves science like a long time ago, but science is now proving that the Bible is very true. So it's really quite interesting. And the thing is, there's all these properties and laws involved in God's Word, and if you pay attention and, and, and really read it and allow the Holy Spirit to show you these things, I'm just learning myself. Um, but I see that this is happening, right, that this is what's going on in the Word. There's all kinds of laws and properties that you put in place you you do have God's protection, but you have to do it, and you have to you have you can't have any doubt or fear or unbelief or anything like that because that is of the devil, and God cannot connect to that. He just he just can't he can't do anything for you if you're going to be like that. So basically, you have to have the precious Holy Spirit. First of all, you have to know the Lord Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you don't know Him, you know, and and, you, and you're just hurting and suffering. I'm telling you, I didn't want to ask Him into my heart because I knew the commitment. But the day that I did, He was there to meet me. And I'm I'm not looking back. I'm so happy that he was there. You know, this is like three years ago, and I'll never forget that day. Never, ever, ever, because that was the first day of my life, really living. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord God, Hallelujah! And you know, the thing is, is he was there to meet me. He knew exactly when I was going to call upon his name. He knew exactly when I was going to accept him into my heart and be born again and die on the cross with him and accept him as my Lord and Savior. And serve him for eternity. Hallelujah. So, you know, see, this is the thing. Uh, you'll be ready. And when you know you're ready, just call out to him. And just say, Lord Jesus, I know that you are this. You are my Savior. And you are the Son of God. And you, you died on the cross for my sin. And you, you arose on the third day by God the Father. And he brought you back up from the dead. And you are now sitting at the right hand of the throne. And you are all victorious and all powerful. And you have the keys. And you took the keys and you said, all power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Born of the Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Flesh and blood and Holy Spirit. He is God in the flesh. He is the Word become flesh. And He is our God and our Savior. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus. So I'm telling you, if you really, someday when you're ready to meet Him, you will know. You will know when that day is. And, um, and I'm telling you, you will never look back. I'm so excited because I'm telling you, I was in hell. I was literally in hell my whole entire life. And I could, you know, still have a good time and stuff and whatever, but my soul and my spirit were in hell. And I mean, I could paint a picture for you, and we're not going to bother with that. If you ever want to ask me, you can get a hold of me. But, um, you know, I, I've been reborn and redeemed in my Father's eyes, a new creature. I've been given my my new body and everything. And, you know, God sees me as my reborn, recreated you know, reborn person. So as a child of, of the Most High God, so he sees me that way, pure and whole. And, you know, that just makes me happy, right? Because I know that my God sees me that way and he loves me. And because he sees me that way, it's just going to happen because whatever God sees is whatever is what happens. So praise the Lord. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, we didn't get to finish this up, but we will um, next Sunday. And I, my prayers are with you, you know, and, and just reach out to him and call out to him and just if you need help and he will be there I'm telling you he will be because he is he is there but you have to call upon his name and, and, and ask him to 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 come into your heart and to really make changes in your life and to, so that you can be you know a child of the most high God and 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 serve him and 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 have all this like truth and light and love surround you because that's what happened to me and hallelujah thank you so much for tuning in um my prayers are with you all you know you are in my heart and i have so many great friends that listen to my stuff and in the uk and australia and, and so many awesome most wonderful friends in the united states and canada and i just love you guys so much and um I just thank you so much for your support and, and for your love and kindness and compassion because it truly is a gift from God, uh, your friendship. So thank you so much. Everybody, thank you.
care, and we'll talk to you later. I'll be back on tomorrow morning, uh, 5.30, or no, I'm sorry, 6 o'clock. I changed the time. 6 o'clock in the morning for one child abuse survivor to another, and then again uh, tomorrow night at 9.30 for child abuse prevention and human rights abuse prevention is up to us. So take care, everybody. Have a great night. God bless you all.